Hi, everybody. This is Craig from UR Compt. I have a special guest today, Jeff McKissick. He is the president and founder of Defense by Design and also the author of this amazing book, Power Proverbs for Personal Defense. You can find that on Amazon Kindle. This is part of our series on what to do if you hit that massive jackpot. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about Defense by Design. Well, really what Defense by Design has been doing for the last mm, 18 years and me for 31 years, and when people meet me in social settings, they say, so what is it you do for a living? I say, I teach you how to spot trouble before trouble spots you. And that's really the essence of what Defense by Design is all about. There are a lot of people out there that talk about what to do in the heat of a moment. I try to rewind that tape and reverse engineer situation scenarios so you see trouble before it becomes trouble. And whether that is for your personal life and or your business life and prefer professional life, we all want to try to do what we can to avoid situations that could cause us harm, whether physically or in your case, fiscally. Absolutely, and that's why it's relevant to what to do if you hit a jackpot, because one of your <laughs> specialties is helping people protect, um, protect themselves from con men coming in, potentially fleecing them from tens, hundreds, millions, millions of dollars. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah. And now before we get into that and some tips that people can use to prevent, uh, prevent the fleecing or being conned, I think your background and how you built the expertise to build this business is fascinating. Why don't you tell us about what you were doing before you launched Defense by Design? So speaking of rewinding the tape, rewind it to 1987. I just graduated from college and I was at home at my parents in Fort Worth watching TV late one night and a guy comes on, he's being interviewed. He himself is a former investigative reporter and producer for 2020, 60 Minutes and NBC News. His name was Ken Wooden. And I'm watching this TV show as he's talking about how he had interviewed Ted Bundy, Henry Lee Lucas, John Wayne Gacy, some of the most infamous criminals we know in crime history. But when he did so in the 1970s for about 10 years, traveling to prisons and mental hospitals, he asked them a question no one had asked them before. Everyone else was trying to get inside their head. Why did you do it? Ken Wooden said, I don't care why you did it. I want to know how you did it. How did you lure your victims? How did you go about basically grooming them and gaining their trust? And I found this fascinating. So at 22, when you have no fear, I wrote him a letter because this is pre-internet days. I wrote him a letter. And two weeks later, he called my parents home in Fort Worth and says, I want to meet you. So he successfully lured me to his home <laughs> in Vermont. And we hit it off in the next six or eight years. I worked as his apprentice, putting stories together for the media, as well as teaching a program he developed called the Child Lures Crime Prevention Program to about 250,000 K through 12 students, as well as another 40, 50,000 adult professionals and various in-service and continuing education seminars across the U.S. So by the time I was 25, I'd already been in front of 300,000 people. And so over now 31 years, easily I can extrapolate at least 350, 400,000 people by now. Again, just teaching the basic messages of how do you protect yourself, how you protect your family, how you protect your money. Because at the end of the day, it's all about protecting things that we hold near and dear. And okay. money's part of that. <laughs> well, absolutely. And you, I, I, I think it's so fascinating. So you talk to the most infamous con men, killers, people that just knew how to manipula manipulate people's trust right. and, and get them to expose themselves, like to let down their guard in ways nobody else would be able to yeah, do. So in fact, some of these guys that we were talking to literally bragged about how they did it. I mean, they're pretty, you know, instead of, again, trying to analyze and get inside their head, they were actually fascinated with people that asked them how they did it. Yeah. It's like, oh, so you're not trying to psychoanalyze me. You just really want to know, to know the nuts and bolts. And they were very open about it, and especially when we were representing the media as opposed to someone that they felt, again, was trying to use them some test case for their psychological study. Yep. They weren't a lab rat, but, you know, they were very open, actually, about sharing that information. Yeah. I mean, they were absolute sickos, 100%, but they obviously took a lot of pride in their, in their craft. In their craft, the skills yeah. That they had developed. Absolutely. Well, thank God that you uh, learned how to reverse engineer what they were doing, and now you're out teaching people how to prevent being right. lured, being conned. Now, we talked on the phone before the interview uh, a little bit about um, some, some high-level tips, some top five. Now, if you want to really dive in, you should check out Jeff's book or... Um, or I guess hire Defense by Design to come do a seminar. But uh, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we launch into the, uh, the top tips, like kind of the list of things that people can start with to prevent being 
being conned. Yeah, well, I think it, just like people don't think of it this way, but if you watch, I don't care if it's Criminal Minds or Animal Planet, whether you're predators you watch on TV or two-legged or four-legged, there are certain principles that predators use when stalking their prey. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about the wilderness or the urban jungle, again, whether the predator's on two legs or four legs. And to your point a while ago about con men, remember, pre predators and victims alike come in both genders, yep. as do gold diggers and others. So let's keep in mind that women can do you in just as easily as men can, if not in more cases, worse. Yep. Because we don't expect that kind of attack coming from a female as opposed to some guy who's trying to con us in a situation, and yet the end result can be the same. Absolutely. But as we start this process, I've referred to this often as the steps to seduce your money. And the reason I talk about it that way is because, <laughs> I know this sounds strange, but it's no, not that much different than seducing a child. If I were a child molester, it's almost the exact same steps just obviously applying towards your money. So the very first thing we're gonna talk about, if I'm someone who's trying to groom you for that big con, that big ass, that big take, first thing I'm gonna do is spend time with you. Because these aren't the people who are gonna approach you on an email or on a phone call, phishing type scam. We're talking about people going for the big bucks. Mm -hmm. They're trying to really take you for a sizable amount. And this is all what's now referred to as social engineering. But the first stage of that is I'm gonna spend time with you. And you're thinking, well, do I know you already? Maybe so. But if I don't know you and I wanna to get to know you, I'm gonna find out where are the places that you frequent. And those are the places I'm gonna be showing up. So my question is, where do you work? Where do you have your off-time leisure activities? Where do you vacation? Where do you go where I can meet you? Because I've already done my research. I've already profiled you because yes, Predators do profile their victims. I've already figured out what your lifestyle habits are. I've already figured out your comings and goings. So now I'm gonna not just one time, but repeatedly start showing up coincidentally mm -hmm. in the places that you frequent. Maybe it's you go to some type of charity event. Maybe you're a volunteer at some organization and I volunteer to be on the board or I volunteer to be on a committee with you. I'm gonna put myself in place in a position where I really get to know you and you think you're getting to know me. Now, I remember you gave me an example on the phone of a, of a man that came into a few hundred thousand, maybe it was a million dollars, and he was working at a mall. And well, no, actually what happened there was, this was a CPA that came up to me, it was her father. And they lost their mom several years ago, so dad, her father, was feeling really lonely. So he came out to one of our more illustrious malls, it's not far from where we are today, and became what we re return, refer to as a mall walker. So he showed up in the mornings just to walk and meet people, other elderly people that were out walking. Well, this woman, who had already done her profiling, knew who he was. She figured his pattern. She knew he was a mall walker. So coincidentally, she started showing up at the same mall, walking with him in the mornings. And as the uh, daughter was telling me the story, she said, Jeff, you already know where this is going because you just gave a whole seminar about it, so I'm gonna fast forward. Yes, we grew up in a family with money already. And she knew who my dad was and what he represented. So she started this whole grooming process, starting with that spending time with him being a mall walker. Fast forward it, she left him at the altar, left him at the Justice of Peace office, thinking they were gonna get married, but not before taking him for 400,000 in cash. And she, he's, she said he was so distraught, so heartbroken that when she told me this, she said three weeks prior, he'd taken a gun and committed suicide. It, it's, I mean, it's tragic. I mean, that's really, a, this con artist, con woman, mm -hmm. really committed murder indirectly yeah. by just fleecing them. Well, and to that point, made insult to injury, the, the daughter went on to tell me, said, and by the way, we went to the police to report her. And the police said, oh, we know exactly who you're talking about, but there's not a thing in the world we can do. She said, well, why? I said, because your father wasn't the first, won't be the last, but every man has given her the money. Mm -hmm. She's not committed any illegal act. So she's gonna go on now to do the same thing to someone else. Mm -hmm. So lesson one, what, what's the headline for this? It's uh, grooming, like beware. Of yeah, beware of the new people that show up in your life coincidentally. Okay. But you start seeing them time after time in the places you go that they just seem, what's, it just seems so random, so chance, so coincidental. And I've told people over the years, any time, especially when you're talking about the kind of people we are, that the words come out of your mouth or a friend's mouth or someone else's mouth, oh boy, that was just really random. 
What's the chance of that happening? Boy, that was a coincidence. Anytime those three words come up, random chance of coincidence, that should immediately raise red flags. And you should at least start questioning how random, chance, or coincidental was this encounter. All right, so if you hit that progressive jackpot, you've got $5 million, you're published on the walls of the casino with you holding that big fat check. Just pay attention to who's all of a sudden coincidentally or randomly sitting down next to you playing and starting to chat you up because uh, there's a good chance that they they gamed, <laughs> they, they did their research and they're, they're saddling up uh, next to you to try to build that familiarity and uh, potentially groom you. Yeah, so. at, at very least it should raise some questions and some concerns. Yep. All right, so what is the second tip? Gain a position of trust, authority, or influence. And how do I do that? I can do it one of two ways, either through relationships or through business. In one case, I knew a guy that ran a $10 million Ponzi scheme in Atlanta. I knew this guy. He was a business law attorney who fleeced his own clients for $10 million in a Ponzi scheme. So his position of authority was he was their attorney, mm -hmm. but he wasn't their financial advisor. So what were these people doing? I understand, I mean, we can understand how this would happen, but point is, why would you be taking financial advice and investment advice from your attorney that you're not passing through your financial advisor, wealth manager first? Makes sense. So gain a position of trust or authority. I unfortunately I can tell you stories of the years where it was a doctor that involved someone in some time of investment opportunity. It was their attorney. Very few times have I heard it being the financial advisor, wealth manager, or CPA. The people who are actually dealing with money. I'm not saying it's impossible to look at Bernie Madoff, but for the most part, be a leery of people that are in authority or influential position in your life who start offering you financial advice of where you should put or invest or give your money. That reminds, I think there's a Seinfeld episode where the dentist kept trying to get Jerry to invest in, <laughs> in some stuff. So, but so we people, trust. There's yeah. certain people that just because of who they are in our lives, we do trust them, but mm -hmm. you trust your dentist for your teeth, yep. not for your money. Like an airline pilot or something. I, I trust them, they have authority, you just, you trust them with their lives, but your life. But yeah, if they came to you and were like, hey, by the way, I got some real estate, I'd love to talk to you about, you know. so. You're saying like, don't let, they may be a, an authority, you may trust them in one area, but don't automatically let that. The trust over. should, exactly. The trust should, doesn't automatically transfer over to the areas of fiscal responsibility. Okay, so, so you hit that jackpot. Don't let your, uh, your orthodontist or your hairdresser start talking you into different investment, investment well, opportunities. Well, and also when you say on influence too, again, on relationship side. So if you've been through one that recently, one of the big two Ds, death or divorce, understand you emotionally are potentially vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about affairs of the heart, but just like the woman that fleeced the guy for the $400,000 in cash, and I can tell you stories of another lady that was taken for $750,000. I can tell you a realtor was taken for $250,000 who found their paramours on Match.com. Nothing against Match.com, mm -hmm. nothing against them. But there are people who, again, part of their profiling process is they wanna be where you are. And if that happens to be online somewhere, that's where they're gonna be targeting you. I don't care what it is, Match.com, eHarmony, whatever the case may be, or whatever ballroom, the margarita ball, whatever you go to, it's all about targeting you. But again, it's that relationship. Now, that's how they're seeking the influence, is developing a supposed relationship with you as someone who's interested in you from a romantic side. Mm. So you've come into a lot of money, and now, this knock down, drag out gal, or in some case not today guy, or whoever it happens to be that you're interested in, starts showing up in your life. Yeah. Coincidentally, what's the chance of that happening? Boy, that's pretty random, isn't it? See, ding, 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 those little bells and whistles should start going off in your mind. But like we talked about on the phone, there's a real key to this, and it's the hardest thing in the world, especially for men, and that is to keep basically our ego, our heart, and our testosterone in check. Yep. Those three things will get you in trouble faster than anything else. Those affairs of the heart and you're lonely, maybe you just lost a loved one, maybe you just went through a bitter divorce and you're trying to recoup from that. I get it. But understand that emotional vulnerability you're in that someone else make you into. Mm -hmm. Likewise, again, if it's a relationship type situation where they're grooming you, this will take time. But if they've done their research, they're in it for the long term. 
So they, uh, they know that that's the Achilles heel of many men is the heart. The ego. The ego. Oh, because again, oh my gosh, I'm a four. She's a 10. Yeah. You know, boy, did I strike it lucky. Yeah, boy, that's really coincidental. Yeah. yeah. So you're starting to pick up on it. Yeah. Okay. So those kind of things that start happening. And then, of course, like I said, also our testosterone, just because we're guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, of course she's interested in me. I'm all that in a bag of chips. Right. <laughs> that flows back to the ego again. So, again, it's cyclical as far as these things are concerned. You just have to keep those things in check and really start asking, okay, how did I meet this person? Through whom did I meet this person? Where did I meet this person? And do some emotional reverse engineer on your own to figure out how random, chance, or coincidental was this supposedly love interest or romantic relationship. Great tips. Okay, now let's see, what is, what is next on our list of things that you hit that jackpot, you hit the aggressive or the Powerball. If we're filming this right now, as I, Mega Millions is up to 1.6 billion. So, all right, somebody hits one of these massive jackpots or they sell a business. We have a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs that are watching. Or come into an inheritance or whatever the case. You came into money. Yep. You now have disposable, if not luxury income. Which means there may be a target on your back. Oh, there is. It's there just, is. do people see it or not? But there is. Yep. Okay, so let's let's move down the list. What What's another tip that okay, we Okay, can... so we've spent the time. We've gained your your interest, your trust, your influence. It, from the perspective of the of the con artist. Yeah, because this is, this is a layering effect. I mean, yeah. this follows a progression in the grooming process. Number three is to now lay a groundwork of secrets. And whoever you trust, I want to now put a wedge between you and those people that you normally trust for your spending, investment, whatever, fiscal type patterns. So if it's a situation where you're married and you come to this money, I'm going to seek some type of situation where I can put a wedge between you and your spouse and saying, Craig, listen, I've got this investment opportunity coming up and and I'm going to put the money into it first. I want you to invest in anything. I want to put you at risk of your own money. I'm going to do this. But, you know, let's just kind of keep this between you and me right now. Every child molester on the planet has used that line <laughs> yeah. on their intended victims. Let's keep this between you and me. So automatically, it's like I told hundreds of thousands of kids years ago. If someone ever tells you, don't tell mom and dad, who are the first two people you need to tell? Mom and dad. Right. So now, same rules apply. If someone tells you, hey, but I really don't want you talking to your wife or your husband or whoever about this, who's the first person you should now be talking to? Your, your spouse, your yeah. wife, your husband. Likewise, if they tell you, now, you know, I know you got a financial advisor, I know you got a wealth manager, but you know, again, I'm not asking you to put anything real. Let, let, let me just try this out first and see how it goes. I'm still laying the groundwork of secrets. Mm-hmm. Or I can also go that if I really want to play this, and some do. It's like, hey, Craig, you know, I'm just going through some things in my life right now. I just really feel you and I have developed some kind of relationship where I just need to be upfront and honest with people, man. Yeah, I've been having an affair recently. I'm telling you something that you would think, wow, Jeff, you're entrusting me with this kind of information. Yeah. yeah. First of all, it's a bold-faced lie. Secondly, what I'm really doing is it's tit for tat because if I'm giving you sensitive information or so you think for me, what's going to be your inclination? You'll, you'll tell a deep, dark secret back to the guy. Or at the very old. least, yeah. I'm going to test you to see if you keep that a secret. Okay. Either way. Yeah, it accomplishes the goal. Yeah, because if you're divulging something now to me from your deep dark past, I've got something there. You got some leverage. Yeah. I've got some leverage, but also I know that you now trust me equally yep. with that information. But even if you just keep my supposed secret, I know that I can now trust you for the next part that's going to be fiscal rather than physical. So that's kind of the, the foot in the door technique. You, put a little bit of a wedge, you give them a little bit of a secret, oh, okay. Now yeah. you give and and sometimes I said, it could be something totally away from finances, but I'm still testing the waters to see if I can put that wedge in there or you're not telling anybody anything I don't want you to tell them. Mm. Wow. And so what, so when, um, as we're going through these t- tips, should people think about like, all right, I have a red flag, mm-hmm. somebody is, coincidentally keeps showing up or somebody's asking me to keep a secret and it's something on the list um, what do you and we'll get back to more things on the list but maybe we can cut in like what what should people do if all of a sudden it's like you know what, I'm starting to feel 
the spidey sense. There's some red flags oh, here. Oh, man. Yeah, over the years, everybody has the spidey sense one time or another. But again, especially regarding guys, it's the heart, the ego, and the testosterone that short circuit the instinct. Yep. But everyone that I've talked to over the years, even when we were luring countless men and women into cars and vans, we lured over 200 men and women into cars and vans years ago for Oprah 2020, Good Morning America, and others. And every person we lured into a car, not with a gun or knife, but with a good story, afterwards all told the same thing. Oh, I knew this wasn't right. I knew you guys weren't. I knew something was up with this. It was told us two things. Their instinct was working, but they didn't listen. Mm -hmm. Because the story short-circuited the instinct. Yeah. So again, I think you're dead on. The spidey sense will be tingling at certain points. The question is, will you listen if and when it does? Mm -hmm. And only you can make that call. Now, it may help to recruit some others, but even then, be careful who you recruit as your advisors, because over the years, how many times we all thought, boy, something or someone just didn't seem right. And we mentioned it to a trusted friend, family member, coworker, and they said, Craig, come on, you're being silly. Craig, you're being friendly. Craig, come on, man, it's just your imagination. Craig, she's into you. Right. Yeah, they're sometimes some of the worst people to ask. Yeah. I tell folks, if you really want to be in tune with your instincts, stop asking for second opinions. Go with your gut. Not your heart, not your ego, not your testosterone, your gut because that has been genetically encoded encode into every human being on the planet for eons, for one reason and one reason only, to keep you safe. Why would you second guess such a gift? Yeah. But people do it all the time. So yeah, initially when someone is spending the time with you, that may or may not initially, you have questions, you may have red flags, but it's not enough to really move on to dismiss them from your life. But if they're spending time with you, and now they're moving in the position of trust or influence, you should now raise the banner a little bit higher where that flag is now turning into more of a banner. Yep. At the point they start throwing out secrets to keep, now your banner or your flag's turned to a banner is now a billboard. Yeah. If not a flashing light on it saying, warning, or is a danger with Robinson, danger. Right. You know, <laughs> there's something going on here because now they're following the pattern. Mm-hmm. And so now we've, we've covered the latest was put a wedge between you and yeah, people that you secrets. trust with, with secrets. Yep. Now we talked about a flat, this is the flashing red light. Now is there a next step where it's like shooting flares in the air? If it's going to be a situation where they're going to try to fleece you all at some type of investment, some type of business opportunity, some type of quote unquote opportunity versus relationship, that would be a different thing. But if it's more of the classical con type sense where they're going for the money, all of some opportunity that's out there, then again, it's going to be a situation where I'm going to show you that I'm investing in this thing and I'm going to show you some type of return on my investment that happened pretty quick and was pretty dramatic. Gotcha. So they'll because produce a, a piece of paper. They're going to say, hey, Jeff, you got to get in on this, man. Yeah, but I've already told you about this. And right now, Craig, man, we got the secret on that. I come back to Craig. Dude, you got to check this out, man. You know, I told you about that thing a while back. All right. <laughs> Look what I made off of this thing. I can't believe this. And by this time, you're like, Jeff, come on, man. I'm, I mentioned, I'm, uh, Craig, I, I don't want to risk your money, man. I think a lot about our friendship. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're just milking that cow. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's something you... <laughs> I mean, I'm just throwing that line out to you, and I'm just slowly reeling you in, but I'm not putting you in the boat yet. I want to titillate that interest. I want to spark that interest because now this thing's shown some potential. But I'm so, oh man, I got your interest. I got your back, Craig. You know, I want to just put my money into this. Let me do at least one more round of this to yeah. make sure, you know, I'm getting the same kind of result. And of course, they are going to see a similar, if not even better, ROI. Yeah. Because now, now I'm bringing in the boat. So this is like the Tom Sawyer. The, uh, no, I don't think you guys are mature enough to paint this fence. Right. Like, no, come on, Tom, let me, I can't remember if it was Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn, but it was like. Huck Finn, yeah. Huck Finn, yeah, Huck Finn, yeah. he's Huck painting Huck. the fence and they're like, yeah. oh, come on, let us paint it. No, no, you guys aren't, aren't mature enough. You can't handle this. Like, no, no, come on, please let me do it. It's so. stereotyping. Yeah. It, or, uh, yeah, it is kind of a stereotype type of situation or um, typecasting. That's what I'm trying to say, typecasting. Yeah. You remember the classic scene in Batman Begins with Christian Bale and Morgan Freeman? And there was that situation they went down to the R&D room and you saw this vehicle that was covered in a tarp. And Christian Bale was looking all around and he said, what's that? Because he knew it was some type of car. Yeah. You remember Morgan Freeman looking and said, oh, that? You wouldn't be interested in that. <laughs> 
that's typecasting. In other words, now we're ap appealing to the ego, or in this case, testosterone too. I'm appealing to the ego because you're like, oh man, I want this. Oh no, you're not ready for this. I saw a car salesman do this one time. I was on a lot somewhere. And this kid, you could tell, there, his dad had him looking at one car, but you could tell this kid was looking at the sports car, corner yeah. of Zod, and he kept flashing over there. And finally, the salesman said, oh, you're looking at that so-and-so over there. And the kid was like, yeah. He said, I just don't know, man. That's a lot of horsepower. I'm not sure if you could handle that kind of power under the hood. Oh, you say that Jeez. to a 16, 17-year-old? Are you kidding? They couldn't go look at that car fast enough. Dad with him by then. Like, you say my son can't handle a car like that? <laughs> so he had both dad and son in the thing. <laughs> I don't think your dad has trained you enough. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So it's all about typecasting in those situations. Yeah. Where, oh, I know it, man, but you know, I, got you, I got you back on this. I don't want you to invest your shit. I want to make sure this pans out at least one more time. The whole time thinking, dude, Jeff, you're, you're keeping me from these kind of Oh, no. I'm just setting you up for the big ass that's coming next. So then, all right, so there, there we, so let's go through from the top. So it's, you come in the money, hit the jackpot, all of a sudden you may see some people that you just coincidentally, randomly, you start seeing them more and more often. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, they're gonna try to build your trust. They may even already have a position of trust, be your, your dentist, your doctor, something, not your financial advisor typically, but something where they may have some authority or trust in your or life. Or in a relationship. Or in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Then they may try to give, uh, start telling you secrets to, Put a wedge between you and the people that you trust that could protect you. Like yeah, your, your spouse. spouse or your financial or wealth manager. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then they may kind of throw a little bit of bait out and say, "Hey, look how much money I made," but uh, you know, I don't want you. To, I don't want to get you in it. Yeah, doing the yeah. typecasting now just to really get you into this thing, whatever it is. And it could be some club they're going to open, some restaurants. Again, some type of opportunity. Typically speaking, with some type of window of opportunity, because they also want to build a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Especially if this is the con artist who's going to go to the next one, the next one, the next one. Because it's got to be at some situation where they need to get an ROI so they can move on to their next victim and start working the whole thing with them as well, if they're not already juggling two or three of you simultaneously. Okay, so now they've typecast, they put out the opportunity, they say, ah, no, you can't have it yet. And then the next step is. Oh, it's the ask. Okay. Again, if we're talking about the classic con game, whether it's some type of investment that they're looking for, they're wanting to open up a new bar, a new club, and I've, man, I've seen this before. It was something supposedly physical that was going to happen, but as soon as the person got the money, they disappeared. So it was whatever that opportunity, business opportunity, we're not talking relationship because we have to go down a little bit flow chart, different yeah. path on there. But still, in that business opportunity relationship type thing, yeah, now I'm going for the big ass because you've seen at least two checks two returns from me to show that I got this incredible type of ROI from this investment, so you're in. And I've already got that secrecy now, so I know you're not running this past your financial advisor, your wealth manager, you're not saying thing to your spouse or any of your closest brothers, sisters, whoever those, that cadre of support would normally be. I've got you, I've got you isolated, and I got you interested. And now I'm working you for the big number. And then, so they present it, and they say, hey, you've got, so there's a time window, hey, Listen, we got we got a week. We mm -hmm. got a few days before before they're going to go to yeah. other investors. You want in or not? Let's say if you, and will they say like, hey, listen, if you don't, I've got other people. I just want to. They friends, could. I want to give it to you first. Yeah, I'm giving you first ride refusal, man. You know, and they said they're only going to be taking ten investors. I was on board. I did the two rounds with them already. That's why they're allowing me to bring one other person in. And because you and I are such good buddies, I'm oh yeah, just pulling this heartstrings, even if it's friendship rather than relationship. Yeah. yeah, it's that kind of situation where you think I am your best friend in this situation. And you're like, I totally trust you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I need. Yeah. Open up the checkbook. And then typically, like you said, what happens, they, they get the check and then uh, check clears and then mm -hmm. poof. Like Kaiser so say in usual suspects, they're just, this, this one, I had a family law attorney that her, one of her clients passed away and left the wife a sizable estate. Well, she started feeling lonely. She went on to Match.com, found this guy that took her for $750,000 before he fled the country. And it was for this new business opportunity that he was opening up overseas. So of course, he had to travel overseas to now that he got the funds to secure this, to open up the business enterprise. And of course, once he was on that plane, he never came back, never called back, and she lost $750,000 in the process. Wow. Okay, so this is a, a tried and true blueprint that con artists use to fleece people out of money. If you hit that giant jackpot, you hit the progressive, you sell a business, you come into money, 
and there's a target on your back, just be prepared. Look for any of these steps. If your spider sense starts tingling. I'm telling you, it's never wrong. And it's never too late to walk away, right? If you No, that's the good thing. Actually, that's the good thing about what we're talking about. We're not talking about somebody sticking a gun or knife up to you. We're talking about them using a good story. You can walk, there were people that walked away from Bundy, Lucas, Gacy, go down the list. There were victims, would be in victims, walked away. Do those people try to grab them, pull into a car? No, they just wait for the next willing victim. Mm -hmm. Same thing fiscally that applies physically. Yeah, you have an opportunity to cut the ranks and walk away at any point you see this happening. The and question is, will you? And that's why you, you talked about it. it's it's layering. So like, yeah. they're they're kind and of guilty progression. You. Yeah, they're, they're, it's grooming. They're, they're grooming you. They're adding more and more kind of layers of almost guilt and like, oh, I've already gone this far. And even if your spider sense is getting louder and louder, it's like, ah, oh, but I, I already have all these secrets with him. I've already trusted him so much. But the point is that wherever it's never too late, even if you're at that fifth step where the ask is right in front of you, just hey, what what do you recommend is a is a a good way or what have you seen in the past where people are like, you know what, I, I just, I woke up, I realized this person's about to con me. What do they do? Do they call their, call a lawyer? Do they just say, hey, listen, delete my number. I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with you anymore. Like, what are some ways? Well, if, you're, if it truly sounds quasi-legitimate, those people they told you not to tell, start talking to them. Mm -hmm. Get their feedback to this situation because they're looking at it with impartial eyes. They aren't vested in this person like you are. Mm -hmm. I would definitely talk about running it past your financial advisor, your wealth manager, maybe your banker, but certainly if you're married, your spouse. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they don't have a lot of fiscal experience themselves, but again, your financial advisor, your banker, your wealth manager, the people who you normally trust with your money and your investments, they absolutely should be part of this process because they actually, in many cases, know how to vet these types of situations, but they won't be able to help you if you don't ask. So, the, so I guess the, the preventative measure, and this is in your book, Power of Proverbs, I saw it in here, it was um, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. And if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. So whenever you, know, you start feeling randomness, you know, random encounters with somebody, I guess once they, that next step where they're trying to gain gain a position of trust or, or drive a wedge with secrets, just go to prevent moving on by telling the people you know you love, your, your spouse, people that you trust, just get it out in the open so you're never isolated. And also even test the words that person. Say, you know, I really don't feel comfortable keeping this since it's a money matter for my financial advisor, my banker, or my wealth manager. I really need to run this past them. See how they respond to that, because that may tell you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. You've called their bluff. Yep. All right, this has been super helpful. Are there any other tips that we didn't touch on that people should keep in mind if they hit that jackpot and uh, they, they're maybe not used to having a target on their back, but now that they've got all this money, they're... Well, unfortunately, there's a whole physical side of this because if you did win that jackpot and you come into money, now you talk about physical safety concerns that you never did before, and including your spouse or your kids or your grandkids who could be tools to be leveraged against you from a physical standpoint, not just fiscal. So there's a whole set of other concerns. As people have said before, making money is great. Actually, coming into a great deal of money can be very challenging because there's so many other things that normal people don't think of, that wealthy people do. Because there's a target on your back in more ways than one. Yeah, and so when you're talking about physical, you like could be kidnapping, could be uh, just assault, or they're... Yeah, or it could be blackmail situations. I get your kid or your grandkid caught in a compromising situation on video, and you're wanting to put them now with that money into an Ivy League school, but I've got them in a very compromising situation. I say, hey, you know, I know you'd like to see them at Harvard, Yale, Stanford, MIT, whatever, but I don't think the admissions department's gonna take kindly to when they see this video I have of your son or your daughter in this situation. Eesh. How much is it worth to you for your kid to actually be accepted in that school? Uh, I mean, it, welcome to I, my world, Craig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure anybody watching it, they're getting that, that tingly feeling, but I mean, it's, it's the dirty truth and there's a lot of gross people out there that are just sick human beings that want to make a living off conning, stealing, yeah. robbing, blackmailing. And, and the only true prevention to this is, is the, actually the easiest one, is education. It's not technology. There's not going to be an app for this. And I don't care how many cameras, alarms, access control you have around your business or your home. 
you, your safety is not about where you live, it's about where you live your life. Mm -hmm. And so developing that educational type mindset, that cri those critical thinking skills that allow you to process and discern in situations that raise question marks, no matter where you are in the world, is an incredible skill set developed and it's one that I help teach. But still, it's, it's what everybody can benefit from. I don't care if you shop at Neiman Marcus or Walmart. Let's face it, we all want to get home in one piece. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, this has been super instructive. I really appreciate it. Sure. Um, I mean, at, at this point, I don't think there's in, there's much that a con artist could take from me. So well, I'll, I'll write this down <laughs> for, uh, for Remember, future reference. You know, you say that, but I can also tell stories on that. And I'll tell, I remind people, it doesn't matter how much you have if you have more than the person who's seeking it. That's a great point, too. Yeah. So the book, Power Proverbs for Personal Defense, you can find that on Amazon and uh, you can download it on your Kindle. And also defensebydesign.com, check it out. Jeff is speaking at a lot of conferences, training uh, high net worth individuals, businesses. So I know you are a busy guy, so thank you again for spending some time oh, with us. My pleasure. All right, thanks so much, Jeff. Have a good one, buddy. All right.